Tree and this is Stitches TV and today I'm going to show you how to create this sort of vintage frilly lace bib effect. It's a really great way to transform your tops and give them a kind of 60s vintage type feel. So when you want to do this kind of frilly bib effect all that you have to do is you just need to release if it has a, a facing on the neck of the top you just need to unpick it so it completely becomes free so you are free to work in this area here and then afterwards you just reattach it now it might look really complicated but honestly the technique that we use just makes it so easy because essentially with bonder web we just have fun laying it all out first gluing it into place and only when we're really happy with the position of everything do we then come in and sew so with this raglan sleeve dress it had elasticated neck on it and i love it but oh it just seems like there's something missing so i'm going to make a frilly bib on the front of this just to give it a little bit more of a 60s feel so in order for me to work on the bib front of the dress i've had to remove my bias binding facing and the elastic so I've taken it completely off but all you ne usually need to do is just to remove it from a little bit wider than your working area. The last time I was in Italy I was in this area called Casino and the whole the whole town becomes a shoe market on a Saturday morning every Saturday morning but then there's a little bit near the car park where there's a brilliant haberdashery stall and they sell top top quality broidery anglaise laces buttons so i'm going to use this is really precious to me but i'm just going to use it today on my special marie mecco dress you need to locate the middle of your dress so just the easiest way is just to do a little press line down that upper bit i fold it over the dress and then i don't have to think about where the middle is i know where it is now so i folded the dress in half to create the press line and I know that I want to have black ribbon behind my lace I'm not going to be threading it through the holes but I am going to be having it down the middle of it very important that you have an overhang that will get trapped into the facing or the bias binding however you finish your neck so when you're happy with the position of it, then you're going to start gluing. So to glue the ribbon, I've got some bonder web and I've cut it to the width that I need it to be. Bonder web is a form of fabric that when you apply heat to it, it melts and it effectively glues two pieces of fabric together. And then I'm simply going to glue it into place. So put it underneath the ribbon, get an iron and press. So that's the ribbon in place. I'm just going to peel this up a little bit and trap it underneath. And now I'm going to have to glue the central lace bit into place. But I don't want to glue it down there because I need to slip my frilly stuff underneath. So I'm just going to put two little strips on either side of that ribbon. So I'll fold that back and get two strips of bonder web. So I've got the bonder web on either side of the lace and definitely got enough of an overhang at the top. Definitely got it straight and then I just glue that into place. So now this bit here is free from a beautiful edging I've cut off another bit of uh, frill and I can use that on its own afterwards and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to gather this up just a little bit gathered like that and then the same on the other side for those of you that don't know how to gather fabric I'm going to show you now it's really really easy basically you set your sewing machine to its biggest measurement and for us it's D on the mini JL and then you just put it under the machine I'm going to use just a tiny seam allowance 
no backwards and forwards, and you just, you just sew. Now, to be on the safe side, you're supposed to do two rows very close together, but for this job, we don't need to. So you just sew until you get to the end. I've more or less reached the end now. Do not go backwards and forwards. Turn the wheel to make sure the needle's up. Release it. And as you pull it out, do a little jiggle. But I want you to cut it with a really long thread on it. And then to gather, all you have to do is, you just get one of the threads, either the top one or the bottom, and you just pull and you ease the fabric along. When I think I've done about half of it, I then go to the other end and start working from the other end. So I usually work one end at a time and then gradually start working my way to the middle. So I'm gonna fold back the end of that frilly bit and then I'm just gonna do a stay stitch so that it doesn't all unravel. So I've gotta put my sewing machine back to normal setting. So I'm just checking the length of it and I have to be very careful not to um, do all the, the gather. So I'm just roughly cutting that there like that. And then I'm going to check the length of the other side as well, make it a bit longer so I can fold it back the same as the other one and do a little stay stitch there. So I don't really want my frilly bits to be too, too frilly. So I'm going to flatten them a bit with the iron so they won't stick up too much. So I want it to look a bit like like that, with an overhang here. And then if I'm happy with that, then again, I get some thin bonder web and I just glue that into place. So everything is just all glued into the position that you want it to be until you're happy. And then when you are happy, then you just sew it. So I've pushed, I've pushed the frill so it goes under that upper bib bit enough so that I know that when I stitch really close to the edge here, coming straight up, that I am actually catching the frill underneath. So look, it does just about stay on, but we do really need to stitch it on. But before we do, we need to trim back the shape around the neck. So I'm being careful not to cut my dress. And I've just shaped it, leaving a seam allowance. I've left a centimeter seam allowance. And now we're ready to sew. Now what we're gonna do is, I'm just going to stitch down the center and down the center on that side because I need to hold that ribbon in place in the channel. And now we're ready to sew. Now what we're gonna do is, I'm just going to stitch down the center and down the center on that side because I need to hold that ribbon in place in the channel. Then I'm gonna come down here because I know that I need to stitch this down but I need to hold my frill into place. Come across the bottom and then back up on the other side using straight stitch, which is a D on the Mini JL. Make sure that your seam allowance for your facings are rolled out, because you're gonna need those in a minute. Start at the top, go backs and forwards, and I'm just stitching down this front to trap, to trap the ribbon into that central panel. But you have to be very careful not to stitch on the rest of the dress. So I keep checking underneath that I haven't got the dress caught. And I'm going straight down that middle, constantly checking. Yep, yeah, I haven't got fabric in there. But because it's glued, nothing moves. So I don't need, I don't need any pins, I don't need anything. It's really easy to sew. So when I turn the corner, I put the needle in, I lift up the foot, turn it around, always checking, I haven't got any fabric stuck in there that shouldn't be there. Put the foot down and then just come up on the other side. 
Can you believe we're nearly done? So I've stitched down here, across there and up there in order to keep the ribbon bit behind in the middle. And now all I'm going to do is go straight down here, just touching the scallopy bits so that I trap this frill together, coming across the bottom and then up the top, still using a straight stitch. Make sure you haven't got any bits of fabric that are not supposed to be there trapped and just use a straight stitch just touching where the scallops go in and then when you're at the bottom corner you want your needle in lift up the foot turn it around readjust all of your fabric so it's all nice and flat and then put the foot down and come straight across Look at that, I love it. It really is starting to feel like a 60s dress. Now what you have to do, you have to put, if your dress had facings, you need to reattach your facings. For me, I've got a bias binding with elastic, so I'm gonna reattach that. If you don't know how to put bias binding on a dress, you can watch how to make a raglan sleeve dress, and I show you how to put the bias binding on and thread elastic into it. Look, I love it like this. It's much more me. <laughs> so once you've reapplied your facings or reattached your ribbing or whatever it was that your neck, how your neck was finished off before, it should look something like this. I love it. I really love it like this now. It's just so 60s and I love that 60s look. Now this look looks great on jumpers and sweatshirts, t-shirts. It's such a great way to jazz up all sorts of tops and dresses. Thank you so much for watching Stitchless TV. Don't forget to leave a comment. I do reply to them all, believe it or not. Look at the Facebook page because that's where I post about the latest events and tips on where to buy things. And if you love this dress, you need to go to my Etsy page, Stitches TV, because it's there that I've got my raglan sleeve pattern that we use to make this dress. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.